So, on the way to the eruption here, and uh, Tor is here, Tor is driving the big car, and we are passing the uh, geothermal power plant that's supplying uh, Keflavik Airport with uh, geothermal energy. And um, Tor, remind me, what's it called again? Svartzenki. Oh, the black field. Yes. So, yes because it sits on lava and actually it's quite intriguing um, well I've seen it from the plane earlier and um, it's quite intriguing unfortunately it's raining it's um, also the place where uh, water for the uh, Blue Lagoon is produced the hot water but uh, I understand it's a weird story isn't it it's it's kind of the wastewater of the it, geothermal it, it, power it's, plant it's, it, well, yeah wastewater is probably not the, the, the I see, and then uh, tourists come and uh, they uh, have a bath in there, and uh, yeah. and uh, it's of course good for your skin. At least that's what they tell you. Oh yeah, and. Uh, Put on their skin, yes, their face I think, and I think it dries out your skin, so it takes out all the uh, well, uh, greasy parts, I guess. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice thing, it's a little bit too expensive. For Yes, I've seen it at the airport where they sell it, and uh, there it looks like yeah, you know, a really nice. fancy beauty shop kind of thing. It's a nice thing to do, at least once in your lifetime, absolutely. Yeah, I remember when I've been there for the first and only time in my life. I, I thought it was very enjoyable, but it was a pricey effort. So, uh, well, I mean, it, it started out as a, just a, a pond which was basically the water released out into the lava flow and it, it uh, didn't percolate immediately through the lava flow. So, there was this, this, this pool of bluish water out in the lava flow, and I remember going there with my, my dad when, when I was much, much younger. And uh, we used to just play there for free. I see, yes. So the Blue Lagoon is more, it's actually more of an accident, I, I, I heard. So. No, and then you know, people realize there's commercial value in this, and, and those who you know, own it and, and run it have built up a, you know, an incredible tourist destination and, uh, and attraction, I guess. And I hear it's the uh, most. Uh, Frequently visited tourist attraction in all of Iceland now. Yeah, they've so. done a very good job of, you know, both building the thing up and also advertising it. Yes, I can guess. And, you know, and of course, a, it's, it's close to the airport, it's close to the yeah. capital, so it's well located. So. It's a success story. I guess so, I guess so. Well, the weather it, here is. It, it, it's a tourist trap. It is, you know, <laughs> I, I don't think even the owners would, would deny that. Would, yeah, I guess so, I it's, guess so. It's, it's a tourist trap, there's no question about it. But, you know, it works. People are happy with it. So, the weather is less of touristic yeah, right now. Yeah, this is a, a bit little, kind little of shower. Yeah. This is the town of Grintavik. It's a fishing town on, on the south coast of the Reykjanes Peninsula. Uh, probably uh, the richest town in Iceland. Ha! Here we go. Uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, because fishing is very successful here and, and, and produces a lot of, of wealth in, in this town. So. Yes, and the fish here is fantastic. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm actually looking forward to some fancy fish dinner as well. I'm here now. So. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice little town. I like it. they got a very good coffee shop on the pier. Excellent. Called Brickham, which means the pier. Yeah. And, um, so that's it. Okay, we better stop now, so, and we continue driving, and I'll report back. All the very best, guys, and Tor is getting a phone call now.